Introduction Teacher, here are sweets for the new car we just bought. Congratulations, Sanjay. Thank you for the sweets. So, you will now be travelling to school in your new car. Yes, teacher. My father will drop me to school every morning in the new car and then I will take the school bus home. Very good, Sanjay. We all travel every day to come to school. Some of us come by bus, some by the school bus and some by their own cars. But have you thought about what was used by people earlier to travel from one place to another? Bullock carts and tongas. Good. Let us look at some modes of transport used in the early days. Children, in this lesson, we will learn about the various modes of transport and also about the measurement of distance along with the types of motions. Objectives At the end of this lesson, you will be able to describe the various modes of transport, explain the standard units of measurements, describe the types of motions. Modes of transport Have you wondered how people travelled in the earlier days? In the early days, people have always used animals to travel from one place to another. For example, bullock cart, horse cart, etc. Can you imagine using a bullock cart to come to school every day now? Nowadays, we have progressed and we have learnt we can use fuel and natural resources to create better modes of transport. As you can see, hence we now have cars, buses, roads, railways, motorbikes, aeroplanes, ships, etc. to travel. Introduction to Measurement Do you know how people know how much have they travelled or how much is the length of a leg of a chair? This is done by using a term called measurement. Measurement means comparing an unknown quantity with a known quantity. The known fixed quantity is called as a unit. When you derive the results of this calculation, you get the measurement in two parts. One is a number and the other is the unit of the measurement. You can also calculate the distance of one place to another. For example, the distance from school to your house. Units of measurement In the early days, units of measurements included the length of a foot, the distance of a step and the width of a hand. However, these were difficult to maintain as the length of a foot would vary from person to person. To standardize the units, a metric system was put in place. This system is a standard unit of measurement and the system of standard units of measurement used now is known as the International System of Units or SI units. The SI unit of length is a meter. Each meter is divided into 100 equal divisions. These are called centimeters or CM. Each centimeter has 10 equal divisions. These divisions are called millimeters or mm. To measure distances, we use a term called kilometers or km. Measuring length. For measuring the length of any object, we need to choose an appropriate device so as to get accurate results. For example, the measuring scale that a carpenter uses is different than the one that is used by a tailor. If these are interchanged, you can imagine the amount of confusion it will cause. Measuring length of curved line. To measure a curved line, the standard measuring tape will not be enough. You will have to use a different mechanism to arrive at the correct length of the curved line. To measure, you will use a thread along the line of the curve. You will use the thread from one end of the curved line to the other end by stretching the thread along the line. After you're done, straighten the thread and measure its length you will know the length of the curved line accurately. Moving objects You will notice that there are objects that move when you apply force or are moving on their own. For example, you will see honey bees flying from one flower to another. So also, you will notice that the blades of a fan move when electricity is applied. This is known as motion. It is defined as a change in the position of an object with time. Types of motions As you know, motion is the change in position of an object with time. The change in its position can be determined through distance measurements. Let us look at the types of motions. Rectilinear motion It is the type of motion in which objects move along a straight line. For example, march. 
march past of soldiers in a parade. Circular motion. It is the motion of an object that keeps a constant distance from a point. For example, hands of a clock. Periodic motion. It is the type of motion in which the object repeats its motion after some time. For example, motion of a child on a swing. Summary. Let us summarize what we have learnt. The modern modes of transport used. Measurement means comparing an unknown quantity with a known quantity. The known fixed quantity is called as a unit. In the early days, units of measurements included the length of a foot, the width of a hand and the distance of a step. The system of standard units of measurement used now is known as the International System of Units or SI units. For measuring the length of any object, we need to choose an appropriate device so as to get accurate results. Motion is defined as a change in the position of an object with time. There are three types of motions, rectilinear, periodic and circular.